the box. The fact they brought this back was so dumb. This never needed to be explored. It works perfectly as just like a little mystery box. I like that it's just that's all it is, you know? I don't think we ever needed to find out what was in it, what the purpose of it was. None of it. I don't think we needed to know that. The only time when we needed to find out was if there was a Xiaoyun game and it was central to that storyline. Not just as a random lore point on a wiki that they then use in fucking Chronicles or whatever. What's in the box? Not telling you. Gotta play Chronicles to find out. It was just a shard of the, um, I mean, this it's not what Darby intended, so it doesn't really mean anything, but that they, they decided that it was just a shard of a Staff of Eden. Yeah, I think, I do think that Ezio, like, what, yeah, hastened his end, this is the way I read it anyway, is that by saving Xiao Yun and propelling on the Assassin Order through her, Ezio sort of gives his, like, he, he, he hastens his end, and it's sort of like, it's almost like he gives his life for the assassins one last time. It's very meaningful. And I love that this is never explained. Darby is such a good writer, because he's like, I will never tell you what this means. I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna tell you what this means. And it's better like that, because it leaves it up to interpretation. It's like, was he really there? Was, de was he imagining it? Is he a secret Templar? Like, who is this guy? I like that we don't know, and we'll never know. He's a spin-off show. He's a Disney Plus spin-off show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What could have been in the box? I'll, I'll have a think. I'll see what I think I could, could have put in the box. I think with the box, I think there's two options you can go with. I think it, if there's... I think you either have, either have nothing in the box or you have it be something not related to anything we've seen before. Something new that relates to Ezio in his later life that makes sense but is not something we've seen before but i do think you could have nothing in the box so that when xiaoyun were to open it it's almost this like realization that i like need to believe in myself maybe sort of thing and it would be the like i feel like that's a potential but i think you could also have something in the box that is something that is meaning meaningful to Ezio but not something we've necessarily seen before. Yeah, I think I think it I think it could make sense for the box to have nothing in it. It's 2000 helix credits. The box was 2000 helix credits. It was a heck of a chest. But yeah, I think I think that would be meaningful. Imagine we got a Xiaoyun game and she carries the box with her and she keeps looking at it over the course of the game. Like she looks at the box multiple times throughout the game and then there's one point where she hits her lowest low and she opens it and it's empty. And it's and in that moment she realizes that she already has everything she needs. Ezio taught her everything there is. She just needs to put it into action. She needs to figure it out. And she needs to come out on top sort of thing. I feel like that would work really nicely. I feel like that would be like a really nice... I feel like it could work. I feel like that would be good. It would just be like this moment of like... This, it would be like, because the fans would be thinking about Ezio too, right? And it would be like, over the course of the game, it would be like this reliance, this almost like, when's she going to open the box? When is she going to open the box and find out what Ezio gave her? But she opens it and there's nothing in there. And it's like this realization for her and the audience. Ezio did all he could. And Xiaoyun is her own person who has her own ability to overcome this obstacle that she's faced with sort of thing. I think that would work really nicely. And it'd be like this final message from Ezio, this like final pat on the back almost, to be like, like, like you've got this, you know? You've got this without me, you know? Like, the Creed's gonna be okay without me, sort of thing. I think that'd be cool. And yeah, I think you... Yeah, 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 exactly. So you don't have her lead from the very start. You have her over the course of the game. There's like these little seeds, these little moments where you can see that she's got what it takes but she won't step up and she feels like someone else has always got to be the one that's leading. Someone else has always got to be the mentor. But by the end of the game, it's like this, this arc and this journey and that final little nudge from Ezio where she finally takes on the leader role. She becomes the leader. She is able to, you know, fight back, take back her homeland or whatever, kill all of the fucking Templars, do whatever that needs to be done, etc, etc. You know, become that sort of fully fledged, formed master assassin that, you know, she always could have been but finally got the, you know, the, the, the confidence to become by the end. I feel like there's a story, there's such a story you could tell there. And, and such a different version of, like, this, like, coming of age and, like, finding yourself story. Like, Ezio went through a, through a similar sort of thing, like, from a young age, having to become an assassin and understand. But I feel like Shao could go on, like, this completely different journey that ends her in, like, a similar spot, like... You could do something really good.
Um, that's the game that I would do. That would be my game. If I was going to make one, it would be a Shaoyun story, and that's what I would do. Um, I think it would be sick. Yeah, I think, I think it'd be great. I think it'd be great. I think it'd be great. And imagine it with, like, a really good score. Like, you have, like, Xiao Yun's theme and stuff. Like, you don't do this bullshit moment where, like, she realizes, you know, that she's finally, like, has what it takes to be this leader. And, like, it plays Ezio's family and it's all epic. Like, no, no, no. You use, like, Xiao Yun's theme that has been built up across the game. That you could have, like, over the course of the game, you hear little bits of it. But it doesn't play properly until the end of the game. Like, you hear this, like, this motif across the game that's her theme. Like, this melody, this small sort of melody in the background of different things that she does but the moment when she finally gets that confidence and finally like stands up you get it plays like the actual the full music properly you finally hear her theme properly that would be so sick and that that way like you would have this link to Ezio but it would be such like it'd be a Xiaoyun game she would be the complete focus of that and it'd be just beautiful it'd be such a great way to do it I reckon you can use Ezio's family. I reckon you could have those notes in there, but I reckon it's brief. It's like, I reckon you could do it like when Ezio goes into the, in Altair's library and sees Altair and you've got those, just those four notes of Ezio's family. I reckon you, you play that. You play those moments, those, like that music or something. I reckon you could do that. If I, if I could, if I could write one, I'd do that. But uh, there you go. I can't and I won't, but there you go. Yeah, I think it'll be sick. I think that will be a sick game that will never ever happen and we'll never get to make it and Ubisoft will never do anything even close to something that good. Um, but there you go. You know? Oh, you know, we're done. That's the SEO Trilogy, boys. That's the SEO Trilogy and the AC3 that we never had and we will never have.